Um, I don't want to copyright strike, so here's some amazing footage of my Ilya merch with some occasional relevant screenshots if I'm feeling frisky. Also, Snow. This film is confused. The opener establishing that this is Solomon's time to shine flies by at breakneck pace, only establishing the bare necessities for an actual story. It makes no sense if you haven't actually played the game, which would be fine if this was just a greatest hits collection a la the Dean UBW movie. You know, a popcorn flick that's just enjoyable because of having the knowledge of what's going on plot-wise beforehand, but is incomprehensible to anyone who doesn't. See, that's what I think this film should have sought, a sakuga paradise for all of the social parasites to blast their nuts to. But this movie wants to have its cake and eat it too. It speeds through all of this stuff, yet wastes the majority of its runtime on exposition, most of which centers around MASH, beautiful character who was the only thing done halfway decent in the first arc of FGO. Which yes, for clarification, I have read the entirety of as of where it is right now. Even the bad parts that avid fans will tell you to skip, yet will still give a 7 out of 10 for some reason. Honestly, I, I don't get that. Nothing until Camelot even brushes 4 out of 10 territory, and that's being generous. What I'm trying to say is I, I know what I'm talking about. I am unfortunately deeply familiar with the source material because I too am a social pariah. So don't put words in my mouth and try not to hate me too bad, even though I know some of you are going to anyway. I have a confession. I hate MASH in this movie. I really, really do. Oh, also, spoilers from here on out. If you're looking for a recommendation, there's like a 10 minute stretch in the middle where servants start showing up that is pretty all right. Go watch that and nothing else. The rest is stinky ass Tsukihime anime comparable levels of three out of 10. Could have been saved by a goofy English dub, but no one makes those anymore for some reason. For those of you still here, MASH. I can only think of one time before she, massive quotation marks, sacrifices herself that she actually emotes. You know, the thing you do with your face and is used to amazing effect in other anime. It's in the scene where she and Ritsuka are on the horse and it's actually a good moment. Like, a really good one. Is what I would say if the movie didn't awkwardly cut back to it near the end to make sure that you really got the meaning. God, and I hate when anime does this. It, it's like the director is just sitting in his chair and saying, it was the only moment of subtext. Did you catch it? Here, have it again. It ruins the moment in retrospect when this is something that happened less than 20 minutes ago runtime-wise. It had me questioning if the director considers his audience brain dead, which... Yeah, I guess maybe he does, because of this moment, the only one where you are shown something instead of being outright told it in the entire movie, is one that he felt the need to clarify absolutely. Which is this movie's real crime. Regarding MASH, the movie tells you how she feels the vast majority of the time. Sometimes she's not even speaking for herself, too. Isn't that neat? Isn't that cool? Don't you just love when other characters are telling you things about another? It's double the disconnect. Now, I'm not about to sit here and harp on about how showing is always better than telling. Because it's not. I'm a visual novel fan. I am deeply familiar with a long, contemplative, exposition-y dialogue. However, there's a difference between doing exposition well and failing at it completely. A good example of exposition is something like the Monogatari series, where you can define clear personalities from each character and have to garner what it is they're feeling based on what they're saying. Their dialogue is never, I am sad. It's just indicative of sadness which is important. It keeps the audience engaged and wanting to learn more about the characters, how they tick and all that. All this exposition about M.A.S.H. doesn't mean anything when, one, she doesn't actively emote to any of it, you know, showing that character growth that she supposedly had. Two, everything is stated in a stilted manner. And three, when she comes back at the end, just blatantly ignoring all of this setup. Which is a problem if most of your audience knows that she's going to come back beforehand due to the mobile game. 
This is why I say the movie is confused. It wants to just skip everything and be a greatest hits collection for the Solomon chapter of FGO, but it also wants to have this emotional through line with MASH like the audience has never played to the singularity. Everyone in this movie is talking about MASH's death like it's this big thing that is going to happen and should be feared. It feels like it's built up more than Solomon himself, I, I swear to god. Another thing, Mash is said to be on the end of her rope, her body can't take much more. Yet, she's never shown to be exhausted or have any trouble doing anything. The movie would rather tell you this 20 times than actually show anything of the sort, which is a problem. It would be so much cooler to see Mash still do what she needs, but struggle a bit along the way as she gets exhausted from doing this kind of thing for eight singularities straight and on a short lifespan. Before coming into this film, I already knew Mash was going to die. And even then, the right plot beats playing out in a new way can be more emotional than the original. To pull from this series to get an idea of what I'm talking about, think the rain scene in Heaven's Field 2 if you've seen that. The moment any hope I had for this Solomon movie died was at what should have been the emotional peak, Mash's Sacrifice. This movie legitimately could have been redeemed, bad exposition, milk toast, characterization and all, if they nailed this one part. However, any emotion I would have otherwise felt at this moment was ruined by the worst timed music I have ever seen in my life. It plays at a time where silence would have spoken volumes more than any kind of music ever could. Right as Mash looks back to the camera and makes this big declaration before sacrificing herself. Not only does badly timed music played, it's this happy, jovial, upbeat tune. Am I the insane one? How could anyone call this well done? The music is hokey and strips any emotion that the scene almost had. Which, yeah, I will admit, I was starting to feel something. I could feel the waterworks working up, you know. Not because of any part of this movie, but because I knew Mash's character deeply from the game beforehand. All this kind of encapsulates what I hate about this film. Instead of doing anything unique, it goes for the most generic, bland option possible. Solomon, have a flashback that doesn't actually show anything. Mash, exposition dumps followed by music that tells you how to feel when she dies. The main character, I think he had more personality as a silent protagonist. His cardboard ass could fit underneath a door any day of the week, but more on that in a bit. I take back what I said about the servants coming in being cool at the start of the video. That was the bare minimum this movie had to do. It shouldn't be praised. It should be scolded so that we can get better films in the future. Don't settle for mediocrity. This film took the only thing it had to do justice and slathered it with this shitty, bottom barrel music that's so out of place I'd sooner expect to see broken Matt Hardy in the corner shouting, DELETE, as he drop kicks demon god pillars. When the shield was left standing afterwards and the music from the game started playing, I just started laughing. I could feel the movie trying to manipulate me into waterworks, but no. This film can try to build this up as a big moment that's hashtag deep and will make 14 year olds on Twitter vomit out Zenith of the Medium to their 350 followers, but it doesn't amount to anything when there's nothing substantial leading to it. Not to mention, and this is an issue I have with the actual story of the game, it has no meaning when MASH just comes back. How does she do it? I don't know, I would accept Power of Love as an answer, but the plot just pushes it aside like MASH is fucking Palpatine. This movie makes no fucking sense. It spends so much time telling you about how MASH is gonna die. Oh, she's gonna die, it's gonna be really sad guys, watch out! But it does nothing to get to that point naturally. It just happens, and I'm left wondering how you people can enjoy this slop. Am I just so broken that I can't enjoy things anymore? Is that the problem? Nah, that can't be. I watched an episode of Emiya Gohan just today and adored it. You're all just idiots. I'm the smart one. Me. <laughs> this movie didn't even adapt what people were really looking forward to either. Prilly and Ryogi are just gone. 
the two biggest cameos. You know, this movie would have been so much better with just by including them alone. Better yet, just expand the runtime by 30 minutes and make the servants interact with each other and fight stuff for the majority of the flick. That would have been cool, I think. Or, you know, they could have used the time to actually make it good. Or, as I've been saying the entire video, just do the Dean UBW thing and go fucking bananas. Same runtime, budget, everything. I love Dean UBW. I don't have this deep appreciation for it, but it's just a fun watch. Not to mention the best fate has ever looked and probably will ever look. Solomon as a film is just annoying though. It takes a bunch of half measures and suffers so much because of it. It has the pacing of a Saturday morning cartoon half the time with servants making their cameos and absolutely going off. But the other half is just failing to be hashtag deep and slows things down to a crawl with obnoxious cuts and scenes that don't need to exist. It is the Shinketsutan Tsukihime of movies. Take for example when Dr. Roman shows up to help the MC. Was a hard cut to a scene of him leaving Caldea that establishes, wow, he sure did leave Caldea, really needed? No, of course not. It accomplishes nothing. A cut to Da Vinci looking at his seat kind of sad would be great here, but no, gotta tell the audience in explicit terms how she feels about him leaving or they might not get it. This movie is just insulting, Jesus fucking Christ. The Sakuga when the servants show up is really well done. Seriously, the demon god pillars are immaculate. But outside of that, there's nothing here that I'd call good. I've saved a little tangent for last. You see, as I was watching this movie, I eventually decided to start taking notes. The last of which simply reads, I wish the MC was still silent. This has been a pretty negative video though, so let's go over some positives about Ritsuka, Fujimuru, Guado, I don't know, I just call them the MC. Um, one, the anime only Mystic Cody receives that'll fuck with his nerves the more he uses it is a really, really cool concept. Two, uh, well, that was fun. Here's why he's a dog shit character. 1. Though the Mystic Code is cool in concept, the only ramifications it ever has is, oh, oh geez, my legs feel a little numb. Now, I'm not expecting Emi Ashiro swords popping out of the arms and memory gaps level of ramifications, but nothing? His eyes go a little red and he looks beat up, but that's it. This man should have been like Goku after the Kaioken. It should have fucked with his body in a tangible way. I don't want to hear him just say, my legs are numb. I want to see him struggling to walk. It's just deflating to the plot if it has no consequences. I mean, after he comes back to Caldea, he gets on his feet like nothing happened. Which is just insane to me. Why introduce this concept and virtually do nothing with it? Ramifications wise, I mean. I'll tell you why though. To introduce false stakes into the narrative. It's to make the viewer be on edge and wonder how he's going to pull through if this suit is destroying his nervous system. When he goes butterfly mode, there's a cut to the mystic code pulling from the nerves in his heart. Something which I would think would hurt at least a little bit. But nah, no ramifications for him. He's too cool for those. Gotta get this Sakuga shot that I think, you know, personal opinion, looks fucking stupid. What does it mean? Why butterfly wings? This isn't a rebirth or anything symbolic, it's just there so all the FGO lits can say, look, 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 he's not a flat character, when he literally is because, two, he doesn't have any urgency. He reacts to everything and never takes a stance of his own. Even at the end with the Sakuga shot from earlier, it is still him reacting to Mash's death. Now, this all worked fine in the mobile game because he was a self-insert protag. You ascribe your own feelings onto him and flesh him out in your own mind. 
That doesn't really work for films or anime, though, which creates a little bit of a problem. See, Ritsuka is everything people accuse Shiro of being, a shallow, plot-armory protagonist who does stuff because it looks cool and nothing else. Something which would be fine if this was, again, a Dean UBW-esque fun ride. But it isn't. With Ritsuka, this movie is trying to do both. It's trying to keep its silent protag, but it's also trying to make him a character. And it fails so much because of it. He has no real defining character trait other than protagonist. I get that there's not really much to draw from, but this boy is drier than most isekai protagonists. You cannot call him compelling when he had one Sakuga scene. You can call him cool. You can call this moment, you know, an awesome time. But to call it deep is a flat out lie. Three. Seriously, there are wrestling characters who are deeper than him. What is the appeal? How could you be entertained by this? It is such a bad character. I don't get it. Why, 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 why? I could go on for another few pages, but those are more or less my very unpopular thoughts about this movie. It's bad, and I wish I had my time back. One out of ten, frowny face, and I'm done watching FGO adaptations. They all suck.